بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين In the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate all praise and all gratitude due to our Lord our sustainer our cherisher, our guide. May his peace and blessings be upon all the messengers for mankind. Be upon Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the seal of the messengers, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon his family and his righteous companions. May the peace of the Lord be with you and upon you all, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. During the month of Ramadan, in the Sunni tradition, Salat al Taraweeh is performed almost in every mosque after Salat al Isha. But in Shia mosques, they don't perform Salat al Taraweeh. And some of our dear brothers and sisters in the Sunni tradition, they ask us, don't you have taraweeh? Why don't you pray taraweeh? I mentioned the core of the answer in the second part. I will summarize it. In the first part, part one of this discussion, I mentioned that the taraweeh was never performed by Prophet Muhammad. Neither the Prophet, peace be upon him, agreed that the companions come and pray the nawafil, because taraweeh is nawafil, is not mandatory. It's not mandatory, it's not part of the five daily prayers. It's considered nawafil, extra prayers. Extra prayers. Neither he allowed, when he went to his mosque in the first, second, third nights of Ramadan, to do the nawafil by himself, some people lined up be behind him. He forbade them. He said, don't do that. I have to do this by myself, and you also must do this by yourself, or go and do these prayers at home by yourselves. This prayers is not performed in congregation. This, is a, this prayers is this particular prayers of nawafil during the month of Ramadan and outside the month of Ramadan is performed is performed individually not in congregation and we mentioned the sources of this hadith in the sunni tradition and the shia tradition that the prophet said khayru salat al mar fi baytihi illa al maktuba the best prayers the most rewarding prayers for a person is the one that he does at home except the five daily prayers it is strongly recommended that you do them in the mosque, in congregation with others, with your brothers and sisters. And then we mentioned that an example from earlier communities, and this example was mentioned by one of the companions of the Prophet Abu Amama al-Bahili, and the story is mentioned by al-Imam al-Shatibi. It says, Abu Amama said to the second caliph that the Israelites... They invented the idea of Rahbaniya, monasticism, that they resort to a place, remote place, in the mountain, in a cave, and they dedicate their entire life to worship God. And they do nothing, no activities but worshiping. So they don't establish a family, they don't raise children, they don't have friends, they don't work, they don't produce. Worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. God says, مَا كَتَبْنَاهَا عَلَيْهِمْ In Surah Al-Hadid. We did not ordain this or prescribe this on them. They invented it, thinking that they are making me happy. اِبْتِغَاءَ رِضْوَانِ الله. They didn't do that. God says, if you want me to be happy, do it the way I want, not the way you want. And therefore, of course, Salat Al-Taraweeh, for those of you who don't know, nowadays it has 20 rak'ah. It is prayed two units together. So two units, 
then two units after that four units then they take a break and this is why it comes the the, the, the name comes taraweeh from raha from rest or break and then they continue another four two by two and then they take a, a, a break and then another four until they finish 20 and they read one section of the Quran in all these 20 units but some scholars they believe it was you know 13 rak'ah some of them they say 24 some of them they say 36 some of them they say it is 46 or 41 or 47 however but now nowadays contemporary days uh, it is done in 20 rak'ahs now in one of the important books which is considered a commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari by the name of Fathul al-Bari. Fathul al-Bari fi sharh Sahih al-Bukhari that was written by a prominent Sunni scholar. He says in his book that during the life of the Prophet until his death, he never performed Salat al-Taraweeh in congregation. Neither the first Caliph after him, Abu Bakr, performed Salat al-Taraweeh in congregation. And Al Aini, again another source, another book called Umdatul Qari fi Sharh Sahih al Bukhari, another book of commentary on uh, Sahih al Bukhari by Al Aini, a prominent Sunni scholar. He says that Umar ibn al Khattab, the second caliph, when looking at people praying taraweeh, these nawafils, in congregation because he was the one who invented it he said this is a good innovation nice innovation the reason he described it as an innovation al Aini says I'm quoting him the reason why Umar himself he says this is bid'ah this is innovation he confessed because the Prophet did not legislate it neither did Abu Bakr nor did he encourage it, the Prophet. He did not encourage it. Interestingly enough, some Sunni theologians, scholars, Huffad, despite admitting that neither the Prophet nor the first Caliph legislated or encouraged or even encouraged doing this nawafil in congregation, they did not establish the taraweeh, neither they encouraged it, and they admit that it was started since the time of the second caliph, Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was the one who introduced it, but they say his act is legitimate. And it is considered sunnah because they depend on another hadith which we already investigated and we found that this hadith is baseless. where they attribute this saying to the Prophet Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al khulafa al rashidina min ba'di Follow my tradition and the tradition of those my caliphs after me When we investigated this hadith we found that this hadith is a fiction The Prophet never said this hadith it was it was fabricated and wrongly attributed to the Prophet so now the Sunnis, the Sunni scholars, they say, yes, yes, we agree. Taraweeh did not exist during the time of the Prophet. It's not part of the Sunnah of the Prophet. Neither existed during the time of the first Caliph, Abu Bakr. But because Umar, he was the one who established it, and Umar has been endorsed by the Prophet, then it means his action is legitimate. We say, wait a minute. The hadith that you are using that the Prophet endorsed Umar or Abu Bakr is not correct. The Prophet never said this hadith. Umar came to the mosque one day after Salatul Isha and he saw people, one of them is standing, the other is prostrating, the third is bowing down. He said, I don't like this scene. I'd love to see people are, you know, they, they, they move in harmony with each other, organized. So he asked one of the companions that I want you from tomorrow to lead the prayers here. 
and then he came the following day and they he looked at people moving in harmony with each other so he said ni'mat al bid'ah this is a good innovation what we argue for in the shia tradition we say legislation belongs to god the messenger of god and if the prophet wants to say something out of his own self god is going to punish him ولو تقول علينا بعض الأقاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. We would punish him. Even the Prophet would not say something without the consent of the Lord. We cannot legislate. Why? Some people say, now what's wrong rather than people going to the cafe shops, you know, you know, doing ergila, shisha, smoking, you know, coffee and tea and wasting the, their, their time and watching television and soap operas on television. They are doing something good, reciting Quran in the mosque, Salat al-Taraweeh and congregation. The masjid is a beautiful, you know, you listen to them. You... Yes, true. We want people to recite the Quran and the dua and do the nawafil. But when the Prophet did not do this, not only did not do it, he did not consent to it. He did not agree with it. He forbade it. When people came to pray behind him, he said, don't do that in your prayers. Let your house has a share of the salat. Do it in your house. Then we cannot, we cannot say this is, we have to do this. Are you keen on doing the prayers? Do it in your house. Do it in the masjid without without you know uh, without congregation and without jama'ah so at least you do the sunnah according to the opinion of the prophet according to god not according to yourself imam ali alayhi salam he came during the time of the second caliph he objected to him he said to him this is bid'ah but people did uh, abu bakr uh, i mean uh, the second caliph umar ibn khattab he didn't listen to no avail. He didn't care. And during the time, the reign of the fourth caliph, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said to the people, this is bid'ah, we are not going to do taraweeh. Some people, they were unhappy. They said, they said, wa sunnata umarah. Oh, oh, the tradition of Umar is in danger. They refused. And some of them, they kept doing that. Imagine, the legitimate caliph is saying them, don't follow this tradition. They say, no, we follow. They are following their whims. There is a difference between following your whims and following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some people argue, and by the way, Imam Ali, let me just quote you a hadith. The hadith on how Imam Ali performed exactly the prayers of the Prophet following the sunnah of the Prophet step by step, step by step. His prayers. Imagine Imam Ali became caliph 25 years after the Prophet. People within these 25 years, they almost forgot the prayers of the Prophet. How, the, how, did, the prayer, how did the Prophet perform his prayers? They forgot because there were many changes in the prayers. Imam Muslim in his book, before him Imam al-Bukhari in his book, أخرج البخاري ومسلم وأبي داود والنسائي four top narrators of hadith I mentioned their names in their book in their books they mentioned and Mitraf ibn Abdullah one of the companions of the Prophet by the name of Mitraf ibn Abdullah قال صليت خلف علي ibn أبي طالب رضي الله عنه when Imam Ali became caliph I had the chance to pray behind him and this is 25 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Ana wa Umran ibn al Hussein. We were two who prayed behind him. Fakana idha sajada kabbar. When he goes to prostration before that, he will say Allahu Akbar. Wa idha rafa'a ra'sahu kabbar. When he comes out of prostration, when he raises his hand, he would say Allahu Akbar. Wa idha nahada min al rak'atayni kabbar. When he does the tashahud and he wants to come up, 
to stand, he will say Allahu Akbar. فلما قضى الصلاة when he concluded the prayers أخذ بيدي عمران بن الحسين my companion, my friend by the name of Umran who was praying with me behind Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam he holds my hand وقال لقد صلى بنا صلاة محمد this man today reminded me of the prayers of the Prophet in another version, فقال قد ذكرني هذا صلاة محمد. He reminded me. He did exactly what the Prophet used to do in his salat. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali followed the sunnah of the Prophet with no innovation. Nothing he added, nothing he deleted. Exactly the way the Prophet used to do the prayers. And this is, imagine, a testimony Mentioned in Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, al sajistani Al-Imam Al-Nasai. The four top guys when it comes to the hadith in the Sunni tradition. 25 years after the Prophet Imam Ali does exactly what the Prophet used to do in his prayers. So Imam Ali comes to the second caliph and he tells him, please, Salat al-Taraweeh is bid'ah, innovation to no avail. Now the last question, my friends. Uh... Why the nawafil has to be done at home? Why really not in congregation? See, my friends, Islam, the wisdom. What is the wisdom behind that? Listen to the wisdom now. The wisdom behind, behind, behind that is that the, cong the congregational prayers, the five daily prayers, mandatory prayers, has to be done preferably in a congregation, jama'ah, -ah, in a mosque to enhance the spirit of a brotherhood, sisterhood, respect, unity, cooperation among the Muslims when you pray with them together. Even if you can't go to the mosque at home, you have uh, your own family, you have a friends coming up, st do the prayers in jama'ah. The thawab, the reward of jama'ah is much more than the thawab of the prayers being done individually. However, Islam says because the prayers also is a relationship and a communion and a chatting, private chatting between you and your Lord, then the nawafil try to do them by yourself in a privacy to avoid riya ostentation, to avoid showing up. So you take your time in your sujood. You can prolong it as much as you want. You can speak with God as much as you want in your ruku' in your qunut. In, in the jama'ah, maybe you cannot recite long verses, but when you do Salatul Layl or other uh, nawafils, extra prayers, you can recite a long chapter because here you are not connected to anyone else. You are by yourself, in a private, just you and your God. This will increase the sense of sincerity, ikhlas, earnestness, piety, righteousness, faith, when you speak privately with God, it's more delicious. It is more sweet. You are not with others. You can focus more. You can cry. You can weep. You can speak to God. So it brings more flavor, more sincerity into the act of worship. This is why Islam divided the worshiping into two sections. One of them in public. The five mandatory prayers. Why? Because we need to enhance the relationship, the friendship, the brotherhood, the cooperation. So do it in the mosque. Then the nawafil Islam says, on the other hand, you have to have your own share of a privacy with your Lord. Do it at home so you can take your time. Nobody is watching you. Nobody is listening to you. You and your Lord by yourself. So you can take your Time to build yourself in your relationship with the Lord. This is why, in nutshell, Salatul Taraweeh is not performed by the Shia Muslims because they follow their Imams and they follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who did not do Salatul Taraweeh in congregation in Jama'ah as we explained in part one and part two. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept all your deeds and guide all of us to the right path. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi
وبركاته